references and adult themes. I'm Tom Ballard. Big week ahead for us on the show. We've got some live music coming up for you. Uh, firstly, from British rock outfit Wolf Alice. They're going to be here, everyone. Wolf Alice. <laughs> Wolf Alice seen here being cooler than you are. <laughs> also, we're having a chat to avant-garde musical provocateur weirdo Kieran J. Callanan. He'll be here, too. <laughs> Seen here being less cool than you are. There we go. <laughs> hey, Federal Parliament's back, everybody. Yeah. Yes! I'm excited too, kids. Huge. Uh, Federal Parliament is back. Also, pretty much all the high schools are now back for the new year. So I just want to say good luck to all those confused, immature, horny, selfish people <laughs> kicking off their 2018. And, uh, hey, good luck to the high school students too. All right? You know what I'm talking about? Oh! Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. Oh, that means so much. Thank you, love. I'm back. Thank you very much. Come on. Mwah. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, wow. Um, God, so many people to thank. Um, okay, I think we can stop the fucking Jesus. All right. <laughs> Yesterday, the Prime Minister was on ABC's Insiders to talk about company tax cuts and housing and dual citizenship and to do weird things with his fingers. Look at him go. <laughs> What is this? What is this with it? This is not good, okay? If you're a millionaire and you're in power, I would avoid this move. It's very close to this, which we all know is the Mr. Burns position. Like, oh, yeah, I mean, I'm interested in working and everybody's just... <laughs> Weekend also saw a big political shake-up. The Prime Minister has shored up his numbers in the Senate following the shock defection of a crossbencher to the Liberals. The passage of legislation through the Upper House should become a little easier for Malcolm Turnbull, with South Australian independent Lucy Gachui joining the government's ranks. Those values, freedom, enterprise, getting ahead, yeah. opportunity, yes. the Liberal values, yes. and you embody them. I do, I do, yes. Yes, you do, yes! It's <laughs> good news. Unfortunately, later, Peter Dutton arrested the entire Gachui family on suspicion of being an African crime gang. So... <laughs> off to a rough start. Who else is moving around? Lyle Shelton, the face of the No campaign in the marriage equality debate, has resigned from the Australian Christian lobby to go into politics. I want everyone to be very clear that uh, I'm not leaving uh, the battle for the values uh, that you and I hold dear, uh, just simply going to a different part of the battlefield. Yeah, it's all very well and good, Lyle, but what are you doing with your fingers? <laughs> <laughs> it's the last one of those, I promise. Shelton has announced he'll become the Federal Communications Director for the Australian Conservatives. That was not the only bombshell revealed in that video. I'm Jim Wallace, the Chairman of the Australian Christian Lobby, and I'm here, of course, with Lyle Shelton, our Managing Director. <laughs> Lyle and I have been together now for a lot of years. Oh, my God, that's so beautiful. Congratulations, guys. Yes. Oh, they're not afraid to share their love. Oh, I'm going to cry. Hot. <laughs> Defence Industries uh, Minister Christopher Pine, he's been making some interesting choices lately too. On Thursday, you might have seen this, he tweeted this photo of him riding <laughs> on an Adelaide tram with all of his friends. <laughs> and, oh. and on Friday night, he tweeted this photo of him holding a baby <laughs> as he prepared to eat it. <laughs> no, I'm joking, it's a cute photo. I'm sure Mr Pine wouldn't use that as some kind of cynical political opportunity to... Oh, no, he tweeted, this is what a Liberal baby looks like. <laughs> Boo! <laughs> Fuck off, mate! Politicians are supposed to kiss babies, not sign them up as party members. <laughs> it's a ridiculous thing to say. Look at that baby. Look at it. Lazy, clueless, <laughs> desperate to suckle on a teat. That's a Greens voter if ever I've seen one. <laughs> yeah. yeah! Fuck that baby! What's that? Okay, I'm being told the baby has left the Liberal Party 
and has joined Cory Bernardi's Australian Conservatives. That's huge. <laughs> that means the government's now down to just one baby MP, George Christensen. <laughs> oh, he's such a good boy, though! Oh, boo -doo, boo -doo, boo. <laughs> Someone who had a good weekend was marriage equality campaigner Christine Forster. Now, it would have to be one of the most high-profile gay weddings, the marriage of Christine Forster and her partner of 10 years, Virginia Flickcroft. It's about having found the friend to party with, the companion for your adventures, and your partner for life. And it's about making this highest level of commitment in front of the people who are most important to you. Of course, slightly awkward in this case is that one of the important people they made their commitment in front of was Christine Force's brother, Tony Freakin' Abbott. <laughs> then by giving birth to the new phrase, he looked as comfortable as Tony Abbott as his sister's same-sex wedding. <laughs> no, I'm being, I'm being unfair to Tony there. He should, he should get credit. You know, he rocked up and he supported his sister. Look, uh, it's a oh, great family occasion. Very happy for Chris and Virginia. I'm looking forward to having a new sister-in-law. Mm. Now, excuse me, I have to go vomit into a bin. <laughs> <laughs> I did look. They all seem very happy. Good luck to them. I wonder what happened to that bit where they said, "Does anybody have any objections?" <laughs> all, yeah, we know, Tony. We're aware. <laughs> Hold your peace forever. <laughs> Having said that, uh, look, he was an enthusiastic guest. Have a look. I now declare you partners, soulmates and lovers for life, married. Come on, Tony, you can do it, mate. You can do it, son. Get involved, son. Yay! <laughs> That's progress, baby. Gradual, painful progress. I love it. I just think it's a bit hypocritical for him to, to campaign against marriage equality and then sort of still show up to the wedding. You can't have your cake and eat it too. <laughs> or in this case, have his cake, think the cake isn't equal, put the cake's right to a national vote, campaign against the cake, vote no to the cake's rights and attend the cake's wedding to a cake of the same gender where presumably he was going to be served cake. <laughs> Anyway, I'm sure Tony will have a great time at the wedding of Jim and Lyle! <laughs> Yes. To the world of tech now, and this weekend, a Japanese inventor unveiled the chameleon mask, and it's one of the worst things I've ever seen in my life. The chameleon mask, developed by Japanese researcher Shun Rikimato, works by strapping a screen to the face of a human surrogate. The surrogate then walks around under instruction of the user. The user can sit at home and watch what is going on through a laptop, which is connected to a camera on a screen the surrogate is wearing. The screen's camera gives the user a first-person view of where the surrogate is going and the user can communicate with people through the surrogate. Do you ever feel like maybe ISIS have a point? Do you know what I mean? Like, if this is what we're spending our time on, maybe the decadent West should fall. Yes. What's the other name being used for the chameleon mask? Human Uber. It's like Uber, but instead of a car, it's a human. <laughs> yeah, because I think we'd all agree, the big problem with Uber, not enough exploitation. <laughs> is it possible for the car to have a soul and dreams that I can slowly crush by paying it to wear my face? There is? Cool. <laughs> Ridiculous idea. Anyway, I've got a serious case of the Mondays, so I'm just going to go chill out on the couch and work from there. See you, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> This is so good. This is awesome. It's way better. I'm not doing this time. I quit. Rodney, what are you doing here? I'm on your body right now. And don't worry, man. Nothing makes sense in this magical space. <laughs> what do you want to quit? You want to quit being my human Uber? Why? It's awesome fun being me. It's not. There was a gig last night I did with your face and it bombed. <laughs> your glass at me. Well, that was one time. Yeah, but what about the blood donation? Oh, that was good of me, actually. Yeah, that was really good. Cool. <laughs> I was going to save lives, that blood. It was my blood. Shut up, Rodney. This is all part of the gig, all right? What about the time when you had to go to the toilet and you made me go to the toilet? <laughs> Shut up, Rodney, get out of here! Right? Stupid Rodney. I don't get paid enough for this. Fuck off! <laughs>
I hear. <laughs> Philadelphia Eagles defeated the New England Patriots. Huge news. Is this the end of the Patriots dynasty? There have been reports of tensions between Patriots coach Bill Belichick and quarterback Tom Brady due to the influence of Brady's fitness guru, Alex Guerrero. There's even talk of Belichick taking the head coach job at the New York Giants. I don't understand anything I just said. <laughs> All I know is that Tom Brady is married to Giselle! <laughs> oh my god, hashtag couple goals. <laughs> I do know the hype surrounding the game is as big as the game itself. There are events going on like the Wing Bowl, which saw Victor Molly Schuyler break her own record of 501 chicken wings in 30 minutes. 501 wingies in 30 minis! <laughs> Skylar won a car and $5,000, which I believe she's going to spend on Metamucil. <laughs> In the annual Puppy Bowl, Team Fluff defeated Team Rough. I'm the Fluffs! <laughs> car the Fluffs! <laughs> and of course, let's not forget the Bowl Bowl, which is not real. <laughs> but it is fun to say. <laughs> All eyes were also on Justin Timberlake's halftime performance, which had to deal with a last minute change of plans. Apparently there was a plan at one stage for him to kind of bust out of a, uh, a hologram of Prince and do a big uh, Prince tribute, but it appears that that is not the case. Prince is on the record back in the day of saying that he thought it was hideous. Demonic, um, I think, were the words he used. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, come on, Prince! <laughs> if someone wants to make a hologram of you, let them make a hologram of you. <laughs> Fuck, I want a hologram. Oh! <laughs> I'll be stoked if I make the in memoriam at the Logies. <laughs> Okay, the date there of my death is today's date. <laughs> Not cool, graphics team! <laughs> Instead of the hologram, Prince's image was projected upon a giant bed sheet. Because <laughs> that's what he would have wanted. <laughs> now, on top of occasional breaks for sport, the Super Bowl is mainly about competing advertisers at the top of their game. The ads are crazy expensive. One 30-second spot costs about... $5 million US. That's $83,000 a second. And that's $83,000 US. In Australian money, that's all of Australia's money. <laughs> all of it. One of the ads getting a lot of buzz this year is a supposed trailer for a Crocodile Dundee reboot. It's got a crazy cast, Margot Robbie, Hugh Jackman, Russell Crowe, two of the better Hemsworths. <laughs> Let's take a look. <laughs> What do you mean Dundee's lost in the outback? He is the outback. Nobody talks about Mick like that. Careful with that knife, mate. It's pretty sharp. Truth. <laughs> it was a surprise. It wasn't a trailer at all. It was an ad from Tourism Australia. But that still hasn't stopped folks starting a petition to hashtag bring back Dundee. <laughs> the only problem with that, with the Dundee reboot, is that Crocodile Dundee himself is a problematic fellow. The Guardian has described him as sexist, racist and homophobic. He's basically Sky News in a hat. <laughs> so, if the Super Bowl ads there have inspired you to re-watch all the old Dundee movies to sort of help reduce the shock a little bit of that experience, we've made a digitally remastered version that finally brings these films into the 21st century. Enjoy. It was the breakout film that put Australia on the Hollywood map. Now digitally remastered for the 21st century. With added self-awareness. Pervert. He's a typical Aussie bloke from a different time. City girl like you, you wouldn't last five minutes, love. This is a man's country out here. Dude, you can't say that. Man's country? Jesus. A really bad time. It's only about another out of the river, but you being a Sheila, it'll probably take two. What are you saying, anyway, that men can walk twice as fast as women? Yeah. Like, have you studied any actual science or just misogynomics? He's problematic in the outback. Aborigines don't own the land. They belong to it. Yeah, go on. I feel like you're about to say something really racist. All right, two fleas arguing over who owns the dog they live on. <sighs> yeah, see... He can't... Anyone else feel uncomfortable? And he's problematic in the city, too. He's transphobic. That was a guy. A guy dressed up like a Sheila. Oi, Mick, it's called transgender. Also, you guys know you can't just grab people's genitals, yeah? Hashtag me too, anyone? Homophobic. I love that bitch, and he betrayed me. Me? 
sorry about my friend. He's just a bit conservative. Don't mention the plebiscite. And is extremely prone to violence. That's a knife. <laughs> Introducing the hero we left behind for good reason. Shoot the dopey bastard! With the awareness of the present. Knife, knife, bigot man. Coming soon. Knife, knife, bigot man. It looks good. It's like a good movie. Hey, in law and order news... Over the weekend, Spain extradited one of the world's most notorious internet fraudsters to the US. Russian Peter Levashov, a.k.a. The Spam King, <laughs> was caught last year and faces 52 years in jail if convicted in the States. The US has accused The Spam King of running a hacking network that distributed viruses, ransomware and phishing emails. How did they catch this criminal mastermind? Well, he used the same login for his criminal enterprise as he did for iTunes. <laughs> Who taught this guy to use the internet? My dad? <laughs> Very disappointed in you, Neil. <laughs> oh, that was sweet. For more, we actually cross to the Spam King himself now, Peter Levashov, in a US prison. Spam King, what do you have to say for yourself? Tom, I am no worse than anyone in advertising. I, I am like that man on Gruen. I'm, I'm the Russian Todd Samson. Look, I even have, I even have pretentious T-shirt with social justice slogan. So you know I'm not a cunt. Oh my God! Hey, settle down, Spam King. You send out spam emails to millions of people. You fill up their inboxes with garbage. That's not normal advertising. Really, Tom? You cannot walk down the street without seeing hundreds of ads. The only difference is my ads are for things you can't put on billboard. You know, like penis enlarging pills, <laughs> penis enlargement inhalers, <laughs> and knock-off Gucci handbags that also enlarge your penis. What? <laughs> that, is, that doesn't make sense. But that's not all. You also ran a malware scam, infecting people's computers, stealing their money. That's much worse than normal advertising. Uh, and so, I don't so, think... Sorry, Tom. I'm just getting word. There are single women in your area right what? now <laughs> waiting for your call. Hey, hey, are you trying to spam me right now? I'm not even interested in women. Uh, sorry, I did not. There are single men in your area right now <laughs> waiting for your call. I don't... Really? Is that true? Yes. <laughs> And if you enlarge your tiny penis with this brand new <laughs> penis pump, I can pretty much guarantee I'll put you in touch with those horny, horny men. <laughs> well, I mean, if they're in my area, you know. <laughs> How horny are they exactly? Extremely horny, Tom. Extremely horny. And if you give me your credit card details <laughs> right now, I can put you in touch with these wet, horny men and give you a new, new weight loss drug with guaranteed results. Oh, my God. Well, I have put on a few kilos over the Christmas break. Hang on, wait a second. You're spam. You're spamming me right now. No, no, no. I'm just letting you know that you have won the Irish lottery. <gasps> the Irish lottery? That's yes. the sweetest of all lotteries. What? No, no, you're trying to infect me with your ads. There's ads all over the screen. There's spam everywhere. How are you doing this? Because I am the spam king. <laughs> I have hacked your silly show, and I have hacked your mind. You are becoming under my control. No, no, Spam King, I can resist you. I know I can. But can you resist two brand new iPads for just $20? <laughs> I don't know if I can. That's a pretty good deal. <laughs> it's the deal of a lifetime. You will buy the iPads and then your penis will become gargantuan. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes, I want a gargantuan penis. Oh. Yes. <laughs> Of course you do, Tom. Thanks for having me on your show. No, no. Thank you, Peter. In a world of spam men, truly, you are a spam king. <laughs> and if you too would like a gargantuan penis, <laughs> please click the link at the bottom of the screen now. All hail the spam king. <laughs> Sorry, what just happened? I kind of zoned out there for a bit. <laughs> Something about my penis. <laughs> Finally tonight, for 35 years, Melbourne's restaurant trams have served countless patrons. It's the perfect venue for those who enjoy eating food while travelling at the speed of a slow jog. <laughs> tonight, the contributor and restaurant tram enthusiast Mark Bonanno decided to find out more.
In 1983, the Melbourne Tramcar Restaurant launched a fleet of glossy burgundy restaurants on wheels, making them the first travelling tramcar restaurant in the world. Warwick Reed is the manager on the Colonial Tramcar Restaurant tonight. What kind of crazy idea was it to come up with the idea for a restaurant on a tram? What's the history there? There's a folklore around the tram car that the original owner was actually having a pie on a tram one day. Oh. It built from there, and right. 34 years later, here we are, still going strong. And you just serve pies? Not just tram. pies, no. no. Not we've, got, pies. we've upgraded from that. There is a pie? No. What? No pies? No pies, but we do have steak. Wow. Wow. It's here. It's the Colonial Tram Car Restaurant. I am excited out of my mind. I can't wait to jump on. Let's check this thing out, hey? Worked up a bit of an appetite, so this should be all right. Uh, have you got a booking? No. No. We've got like a three month waiting list at the moment, so you haven't booked, we're fully booked tonight. Oh. <laughs> I waited my whole life to get on that tram. I thought dinner was a sure thing when you take a TV crew to film a restaurant. Piece of shit. The piece of shit. Go, go, fuck them. Tram car restaurant. Puts a fucking restaurant on a tram. Stupid. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Stupid pie man with his stupid tram. Oh, they're not the only ones who can move slowly and serve food. <laughs> I'm gonna take them on at their own game. It's time to disrupt this market. Today, I'm setting up a teppanyaki rickshaw and we're gonna bring these tram bastards down. You got me down. The teppanyaki rickshaw. So, first rule of teppanyaki, eggs. Oh shit, fuck, where's that going? Bro, egg on my The thing about teppanyaki is that it combines culinary wizardry with some showy off stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. More eggs, yeah! We're cooking wasabi eggs! A bigger seller on the menu. I'm a teppanyaki boy. Is the hot plate plugged in? It's kind of a bit shit if the hot plate's not plugged in. The tram car has a full restaurant. Tom, Ballard. I've got yolk in my beard. I've got yolk in my beard. Would anyone be interested in a teppanyaki rickshaw experience? It's $500. <laughs> I don't even know why I picked teppanyaki. I felt like Mexican anyway. Give me some of them tacos. <laughs> you, don't, you don't have tacos. They ain't got no tacos. Mark Renato, everybody, give it up. That's our show for this evening. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, Il Behavior is up next on ABC Comedy. Make sure you join us tomorrow night to see live music from.